Hello everybody, Atlanta JDM here. As you can see, I'm sitting in a bunch of traffic. I'm heading up to the shop right now. I wanted to do the uh, driving video for this 1991 Subaru Sandbar on the interstate to kind of show everybody the, uh, the capabilities of these vans on the interstate in the US versus over in Japan where they're only going like 50 miles an hour, you know, here. You know people we have a speed limit but how many people actually abide that you know I always tell people you know these things kind of cap out at 60 65 miles per hour if you are uh, traveling long distances though you kind of want to stay at like 90 kilometers that's kind of your like your sweet spot um, if you're driving for a couple of hours let's say you're driving five hours uh, I try to pull over every hour and a half two hours and let it rest just mainly because you know these vans just they're not used to that commute um so what else so this van's already actually been sold to a couple in north carolina um so there i'm lucky enough that they've given me permission to do driving loud truck because usually when something is sold, I don't drive it, it's bad juju, but they are making a long trip home to North Carolina. Um, um, this one's had a good bit of maintenance done to it since it got here, so I live about 50 miles away from the shop, so I always try to test out the cars the best I can before they make long trips like that. And I'll go over all that in the walk around, what we uh, kind of did to it. Now, the good thing about being in a small van like this is I can pretty much cut everyone off, which is a really douchey thing to say, but let's just go ahead. Hey now! What the fuck is wrong with you? That's uh, you know, Atlanta drivers for you right there. I need to actually fix the spear real quick. Sorry, GoPro. Oh, shit. Damn it, Charles. Alright, sorry about that. I've actually got this window down because, I mean, I've got the AC on, but I don't know. I could close it, I guess. The extra breeze was nice and that little rattling you can hear in the back I'll make sure to show you guys in the walk around that is just the little like pins for the curtains and they're just like dangling or vibrating like you know by vi like violently vibrating because there are no curtains on them. there's no weight holding them down and they're just like shaking in the back so that's not anything like with the engine or the car itself I don't know if I've got like the flu or strep or what, but the show must go on. Oh man, I just I just made the first mistake in driving a right-hand drive. I still to this day, because I'm in different cars all the time, between uh, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, between wholesaling and importing. So I still mess up to this day the windshield wipers and the blinkers. So right now, I just got to 80 kilometers. I'm in fifth gear. I'm at 43,000 RPM, and we're going uphill. So for the fact we're going uphill, that speed is uh, pretty good. Like I said, now I'm at 90, right under 5,000 RPMs, and that's honestly like right where I like to stay now. I'm never drive on the in these two lanes in case you know when I'm on the interstate I'm doing it just for now because I drive this every day and I know exactly like this I mean I just know the construction work and these guys might pull off and I'm just not trying to get stuck in it but for the most part you're gonna be on you're gonna be right lane cruising the whole time in these vans unless you want to piss everybody off then you can ride these two lanes whatever 
see right there, 90, that's like your sweet spot. I'm trying to get over, but these people, uh, right there you're at 51,000 rpm engine temperature is still good like when it comes to a lot of the KC Dosha vans or trucks I don't really have a particular brand that I'm like all about like I love the way Honda's like they handle the Acties are really great but when it boils like when it boils down to it all the brand i mean there it's a k truck or van like it's gonna do one thing or the other one of those passes go they're all basically serving the like they're all serving the same purpose i don't really have a you know i don't really care which one i'm driving but the subarus to me definitely feel like they have more like pep to it and they've got a little more speed than the mitsubishi trucks then um, uh, the Daihatsu Tri-A, the Daihatsu uh, High Jet. See, look at that. You're a fucking celebrity in these things, man. Everybody wants to be your fucking friend. <laughs> Like it's kind of cool like when I left my apartment everyone on the other side of the road going this way like they're all just smiling and laughing and it's like you know what good for you I'm glad I could put a smile on your face this early in the morning and the wind too it's one thing I don't look out for as well because these things are so like top heavy I guess I mean you're just kind of like cruising along and get that one bad gust. Like the scariest driving a K truck or van experience was when I got in between two 18 wheelers. Never again, man. Never again. That was terrifying. actually going under the speed limit unfortunately but it is what it is I got three freaking cylinders man that's 60 miles an hour 100 kilometers things that we did to this van when it came in um, I'm not gonna lie to you when it came in it needed a lot of work our guys kind of dropped the ball on this one but I'm not gonna completely blame them I think it was a combination of you know the trip here and whatever might have happened at the port I don't know but basically all the fuel lines were just basically rotted out it had bad gasoline running through the car the car wouldn't start and we you know were very frustrated because like i said in the beginning of the video this van is a unicorn in itself like this is the top selling KC dosha van on the market right now and you know second place like the honda Act. 
but with the features and you know we're excited about it so we basically uh, put a new fuel pump in it the fuel pump is the same as the legacy the 1980 super legacy um, I think it's a legacy oh, don't quote me on that then we got uh, new fuel lines we uh, dropped the fuel tank clean the fuel tank out um, new spark plugs Basically, like, I mean, we changed a lot of stuff where now it's, I mean, you know, right when we got the uh, spark plugs back in there, it was good to go. Crank right on. I've been driving it, you know, like I got a 50 mile commute one way. So I'm putting some miles on it, putting fresh gasoline in it, cycling it through, making sure when Randy and uh, Kathy do come pick it up from North Carolina, then they're not going to have any problems. We're gonna get new tires put on it probably tomorrow and it'll be good to go it'll be in storage waiting on them to fly down like you gotta be a real like that lady was just like texting and driving I mean you gotta be like a bad driver for me to be passing you in this thing honestly kilometers this is what it feels like to be going 100 kilometers in a k-van now I'll go let this car pass I will try to get to 120 just to show you guys but so that's 110 oh shit we're going downhill so that helps a lot too but all right so that's 120 that's almost 80 miles an hour in a case you don't 6,000 rpm so we can do it it wasn't that bad you know it was pretty smooth i wouldn't recommend doing it for a long time but see, that's 110 right there still just cruising along everyone's just waving at you hey what's up brother There we go again, 120 going uphill, 6,000 RPM. It's smooth, I'm not like, oh, what was that? Fuel star? Fuel star? Oh, we might have overdone it. Might have overdone it. So that is why you don't do it for too long. I think it just fuel star, but it's good to go now. That is why we stay in between 80 and 100 right there. Van just like it, it can do it, but it's just not made for that kind of driving. If you want something like that, then you know, get a you know Toyota Starlet or something. I guess I don't know. shop I'm gonna rip out every single one of those little damn clips it's the most annoying sound I actually meant to do that before I did this video but <laughs> whatever feel the truck next to you exit 10 is coming up now I think so it's about halfway up there I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys watch me drive all the way to ATL JDM I just wanted to show you a little bit of freeway time so I guess we're going to cut to the walk around oh wait hold on wait wait I was gonna show you guys actually what 
25 year old speakers sound like. I got my little Bluetooth thing. Let's see if they're any good. If you played Need for Speed, you know what this song is. Oh, that actually doesn't sound too bad, but it doesn't have any bass in it, so. copyrighted and ban it so let's go do the walk around all right so 1991 subaru sandbar supercharged working ac all-wheel drive stick shift i'm going to talk a little louder i've got my neighbors next to me they got their fan on really loud i'm i still like i'm sick i have strep or the flu i'm not sure but i needed to do this video get it out of the way do a quick lap around the car. Definitely one of my favorite Casey Dosha vans to drive. Um, like I said in the driving around though, and, and a lot of my other videos, to me, I don't really have a preference when it comes to brand. They all kind of serve the same purpose. It kind of just depends on what you're looking for out of it. If you want something just to cruise around, um, the Atreides are really nice. Honda. The Honda Actis have some of the best handling in my opinion, but if you need four wheel drive, if you need that extra oomph, I feel like the Sandbar is like the way to go. Cause Sandbars have a four cylinder and like a, a, the, the, the notorious Clover four is what it's called, but it still is 660 CC. And the fact that this one has a supercharger is pretty awesome. Um, so just some of the cosmetic boo-boos on it. Because <clears throat> that's what I go over first in all the videos. Yes, a crack right here. Scratch right there. Sorry, not a crack. You've got some really poor touch up paint that was done in Japan. Oh my god, this. I can never get the. Like, I'm sick, dude. Can you just cooperate with me today? Alright. You got a small dent right there. Really, the worst part is the back. That's just some surface rust. You can see some touch-up paint all around it. They tried to bond to it or fix it up, but someone backed into something. And that's the aftermath of it. Again, pro backing up skills. And just a little dent right there. Uh, mechanically, like I said, this van came in with a lot of problems, but everything has been fixed now. So we put a new fuel pump in it, changed all the lines. Basically what happened was it sat on the boat. You know, the trip here takes a pretty big toll on a lot of these cars since they're a lot older. Um, usually batteries are dead, so we changed batteries. But in this particular case, it just had gas that sat in it the entirety of the trip. It just turned into really bad gas, mixing with everything, you know, that the boat ride brings the weather the moisture the you know etc etc and it really just made the gas in the van just not good i feel like it ran out of gas and the people at the port just put gas in it and it was really bad gas just to get it off the ship this is just a 
an assumption, by the way. This isn't like actually what happened. I'm just thinking of possibilities. And um, so yeah, now it's all good. The fuel lines have been changed. All the bad gas is out. The fuel tank has been cleaned. The fuel pump is changed. The spark plugs have been changed. Like literally everything but the you know timing belt, a water pump, and major seals have been done to this van. So it handles as new as a 27 year old van is gonna handle. So now let's go on the inside. I'm guessing the inside's really nice. Um, you can see a little bit of play on the foam for the driver's seat. Passenger seat looks good. The original seat doilies with Subaru on them. And so you got five speed manual transmission. If you go all the way to over, over, and then one, that's a low um, first gear for four wheel drive. You're saving grace, AC, which is ice cold. You've got 57,471 kilometers. I think that's like right under 37,000 miles, like 36,000 and some change. You do have curtains on this side, not on the other side though. Back seat looks great. Cup holders. There's your rear heat too with the switch right there. And one big thing on the inside was the headliner for this car was really, really disgusting. Now you can still see some uh, stains from you know, my detail guy, God bless him, was out here scrubbing, scrubbing, and scrubbing. And compared to what it was before, I'll take that all day. And you can definitely tell that someone did smoke a lot in this van when its life was uh, in Japan, which is a common thing. Um, it did have these poles going from one side to the other side. We took all those out, so there are holes in the headliner with little, you know, residue from it just spending time up there. Those could not wash out either, but I took them out because I thought the poles were kind of dumb. They're kind of useless. I mean, I'm still gonna give it to the couple who's coming to pick it up, but um, I think I have them over here somewhere. There they are right there. Now that little clattering sound or that shaking that you heard in the driving or the when I was driving on the interstate is just these things right here just shaking as you're going down the interstate all of them together make that really annoying clattering sound so it's nothing with the engine because the engine is in the back it's a rear engine um, so it is just those and I could take those out I might actually take those out right now because it is quite annoying. Oh, that's locked. Oh, that's locked. Damn it. Sorry, I feel like I'm rushing this video, but I genuinely just feel like shit and I want to go to sleep. I've got a customer picking up a car today, so I figured while we're waiting on them, might as well just use our time wisely. So apparently, this should fold down, or the passenger seats should fold down into the floorboard, if I'm not mistaken. So I think we go, first step is to pull the seat down, obviously. Try and do it with one hand. All right, so it's actually this one back here. And this one was the one I showed you first. Think that. Oh no! Wait, that whole thing goes up. What the hell? Huh? Flip that. Uh, so the gotta take the uh, headrest off first. All right, let's try this again. Let's pull this back up. 
All right, now you gotta take the headrest off first. All right, now you hit this switch right here. This goes down. So now you got it down. And then you pull this right here. And it folds into, and this whole thing actually lifts up, which your tire changing equipment is underneath it. So it's just for access to get your tools spare tires actually right there but yeah got the uh fold down seat config in the back which is something that is very popular especially for rural ugh, rural mail carriers guys you just need to go to sleep <coughs> Again, the switch. Pull it down. Now, I don't know how the cup holder goes down, but we'll figure it out in a minute. And then you pull this the cup holder. Actually fits. Hold on, let's scoot this up a little bit. You gotta scoot the front seat up. Yeah, there you go. Cup holder goes down there, armrest goes down there, folds in nice and tight. And you just got space for days. And let's see. Oh yeah, I could go to sleep in here. I might actually go to sleep in here. So Tommy Carver. And you can see in the back that it's got the curtain um, little hooks and pins on each side, which just adds more sound effect from where we were driving. So all those are probably gonna be stripped out before Kathy and Randy come down to get this awesome van. And the tires will be changed because they look nice and shiny but they do have some dry rotting on them up here on this one in particular this one's a little worse i think that's okay yeah see you can see a good see the tread's good but see all the dry rotting from it sitting and nah it's not our style so we're going to change those probably tomorrow but I honestly think that's it I had this open because I need to adjust this sometimes it gets caught up so pretty easy fix but again I think that's gonna be it sorry for rushing the video I feel like shit I'm gonna go crawl under a blanket until I get better but um yeah we'll see y'all next time